In this video, we're reviewing Evil Dead Rise and showing you how to make a cocktail to awaken the demons inside you that I've named the Sour of the Dead. Today, on the Martini Shot. Hello and welcome to the Martini Shot, home of movie reviews and movie-themed cocktails. My name is Brandon, and before we get into the review, let's instill the Book of the Dead into a tasty, foamy cocktail I've named the Sour of the Dead. And hey, if you enjoy movie reviews and movie-themed cocktails, be sure to leave a like and hit subscribe if you'd like to help support the channel. So obviously, as the name suggests, I am pulling inspiration from the Necronomicon, aka the Book of the Dead an item that is pretty prevalent across almost all forms of Evil Dead media. And so for the appearance of this cocktail, I was really trying to find a good way to basically transfer the idea of a flesh-bound book into a cocktail. So for this, I decided to employ some darker spirits, mainly rum and some coffee liqueur. I also decided to throw in some amaretto, and that's what kind of gave me the idea to make this a sour. Mainly just because I was really interested to see how these flavors would kind of coincide with one another, but also because I really wanted to do another stencil on top of a drink, and the best way to do that is to use egg white. And the only way to drink a traditional sour is with an egg white. I've always stood by that. So yeah, this has pretty much turned into quite the breakfast cocktail. If you've seen Evil Dead Rise, then you know there's plenty of eggs to go around. Let's get into it. All right, let's start with the one ingredient that will absolutely be needed to make this a sour, and that is our lemon juice. So freshly squeeze some lemon juice, and you're going to be using three-fourths out. Next up, we are gonna be adding some simple syrup. I'm gonna to continue to use some cinnamon simple syrup I made a while back. You can use normal simple syrup and throw a little bit of cinnamon in there, but we are actually gonna be incorporating cinnamon into the drink later down the line. So if you don't have cinnamon simple syrup, fret not, you can still add it in a bunch of different ways. But for the syrup, you're gonna be doing half an ounce. And now for our alcoholic ingredients, we are gonna be first starting with amaretto. And you won't need a ton, the flavor will definitely come through, I promise. You're only gonna be needing one fourth ounce. And now for our coffee liqueur, you are going to be doing one ounce. And then finally for the rum, I am breaking out the plantation again, one of my favorite dark rums, and you're going to be doing one and a half ounces. And the final ingredient to really make this a true God honest sour is going to be our egg white. And I've said so in the past, but in case you're new to egg whites and drinks, fret not, you don't get any of the taste of the egg in the cocktail as long as you do your best to remove the yolk. The egg white itself doesn't actually carry any of the flavor of the egg. And the reason we're using it is because when you shake it with the ingredients without ice, it's going to make it this nice, frothy, creamy texture that's going to taste great and give us the nice frothy head that we're going to be looking for for a stencil later down the line. So go ahead and add your egg white. And now we're going to do what's called a dry shake, which is where we shake without any ice. Eliminating the ice basically allows the egg to emulsify and become nice and creamy and frothy. And as you're doing this, you wanna make sure that you keep your shaker as tightly closed as possible. Because there's no water in there to really break it up, there's gonna be a lot of air buildup, so it's going to wanna to pop open and send your drink everywhere. So do your best, hold that thing tight. Now that we have our dry shake done, now we can go ahead and throw in some ice and shake the chill. Now for the glassware, I went ahead and used a coupe. So go ahead and grab one and go ahead and strain. All right, and now the last element that we are gonna be adding to this drink is a dusting of cinnamon. And for this, I went ahead and made a nice little Necronomicon uh, stencil. Stenciling with cocktails is very tricky. It can be very difficult and frustrating at times. I have failed so many times at trying to do stenciling. So if you don't get it the first time, it's okay. Just take your time, keep practicing, keep working with different stencils. Sometimes different shapes are a little bit easier than others. Let's go ahead and see what happens. And there you go, now you have the Sour of the Dead. Yeah, I am incredibly happy with how this cocktail turned out. It's really delicious with that unexpected blend of lemon and coffee. It's robust yet sour, and it does it in such a balanced way that I really can't believe it's melding this well. 
The amaretto is under there a little bit. It's not as powerful as the other ingredients, but definitely the rum is kind of what pleases me the most. A lot of the vanilla notes of the rum really come out in this drink. And the cinnamon is a nice taste, doesn't overpower everything, and actually blends pretty well with those citrus elements. And of course, the egg white makes it nice and frothy, very desserty. It's incredibly delicious. This is a great spin on the classic whiskey sour that I think a lot of people will like. So definitely give this one a try if you can. Now that we have our drink, let's cut our way through the review of Evil Dead Rise. The Evil Dead franchise is one of those classic horror series that I think not only stands the test of time, but is also one of the more consistent series when it comes to quality. Sam Raimi's original foray into low-budget body horror is iconic at this point, due in part to the film's impressive practical effects, its dark absurdist humor, and of course, a legendary character performance from Bruce Campbell. The first two films are absolutely terrific, with the sequel being my personal favorite. The third film, Army of Darkness, certainly leans into the comedy and zaniness established in the prior films the hardest, and while not my favorite, I have to respect Raimi for going in a different, unique direction. Then we have the 2013 reboot sequel from Fede Alvarez, which completely ditched the goofiness and fully leaned into sadistic brutality. While lacking in the charm of the original and relenting from trying anything too new, I still have to give it props for being an absolutely gruesome watch. It was actually one of my first R-rated films I watched in theaters. What a place to start. So unlike many other legacy horror franchises, Evil Dead has a pretty decent track record. Hearing of a new film coming around gave me a ton of anticipation, and the trailer truly sold me. It looked like the film was going to honor the identity of the original while attempting to give it a fresh coat of paint. And that's mostly what Evil Dead Rise accomplishes. It's a gory, brutal film filled with much of the calling cards that makes the series so iconic. There's a shit ton of blood, gore, dismemberment, and an underlying black humor to it all. While I had a hell of a time, I do have to acknowledge that the film tends to feel a bit more conventional than its past iterations while struggling to cement its own identity to the franchise. But if you're looking for some decent scares and solid effects, I think this is what you're looking for. In the film, an earthquake traps a mother, her three children, and her visiting sister inside their LA apartment. And like true Evil Dead fashion, an ancient demonic force begins to torture the family. The mother becomes possessed and sets out on a violent, murderous spree towards the occupants of the apartment while her sister tries to get her and her sister's kids through the night. It essentially follows the beats you'd expect from the Evil Dead formula. Although this time, the movie makes the bold move to not have it set in a cabin in the woods. Daring decision. In truth, the new setting is a welcome one, still maintaining the claustrophobic atmosphere of the previous movies, while adding a new dynamic to a familiar approach. Sure, a two-bedroom open floor plan apartment doesn't have the same ominous creepiness of the woods, but it does lend itself to some unique sequences for the series. We do get a little bit of that classic Evil Dead feel at the beginning, though, with one of the most badass title reveals in recent memory. Admittedly, the way the film inserts the demonic evil into the story does feel pretty contrived and silly, which is something that did stand out to me. Without spoiling too much, it just feels very coincidental, even beyond horror movie silliness. The way the other films establish the Book of the Dead and how it ends up in our protagonist's hands feels a bit more believable, but here it's a bit far-fetched. Aside from this, the changes to the Evil Dead character dichotomy are welcome. Instead of the typical cast of horny teens, we're instead introduced to an imperfect yet loving family. The relationships between them are far more interesting and engaging than I think they've ever been in the series, which is of course bolstered by some great performances. Alyssa Sutherland's Ellie is perhaps the standout, committing to all sorts of inhuman body movements and terrifying expressions. She manages to be incredibly threatening and imposing even when she's on the other side of a door. Lily Sullivan's Beth is also a great protagonist, having to come to terms with her own impending motherhood in the most extreme way possible by trying to protect her nieces and nephew. Speaking of which, the younger performances from Morgan Davies, Gabriella Eccles, and Nell Fisher are all superb as well. These kids go through some absolute hell, and they do a great job selling the terror of what they're experiencing. While feeling different from past films thanks to its location and character archetypes, the film never lets you forget its roots. The film plays out exactly how you would expect. Characters find a creepy book made of flesh, its incantations get read, people get possessed, and all hell breaks loose. There's even quite a few callbacks to past films, whether it be iconic quotes or repurposed scenes like, instead of having a demon trapped under a cellar door, this one is locked out of an apartment. At times, the film feels a bit too reliant on the past, opting for cheeky callbacks rather than fully committing to doing its own thing. Little nods and winks are fine, I just think it had a good thing going with its new setting, and I wish it would have kept trying to be more unique. 
There's also a metric ton of Chekhov's gun type hints towards certain objects coming into play later. Depending on how you feel about this trope, you may find yourself less surprised than you'd like when foreshadowing is this obvious. But it can still be a bit fun. I can be a bit more forgiving when the film does its best to honor the legacy of its predecessor by sticking with a reliance on practical effects. If there were digital effects that worked here, it's certainly hard to tell. The film's use of prosthetics, fake blood, and gruesomely severed body parts go a long way in maintaining the brutal nature of the original. Glass penetrates skin from the inside, eyeballs get sucked out of skulls, cheese graters are ripped across legs, and scalps are ripped clean off. It's all fairly gnarly, though I do have to say that the 2013 film may still hold the title of most viscerally disturbing when it comes to the gore. Nonetheless, the practical effects here are still top-notch, with bucket loads of blood to spill. And like the other films, there's one big demon to take on at the end, with this one being more interesting than the abomination from the previous film, though not as nutty as Henrietta's final form from 2. Still, I love the design of the creature, feeling very inspired by the thing. I just wish we could have maybe seen a bit more of it. Evil Dead Rise honestly feels like a pretty comfortable middle ground between Raimi's loony classic and Alvarez's grim and mean retelling. While it doesn't really lean into the goofiness as much as the classic, there's still a bit of dark humor lurking underneath, and while it can feel rather conventional compared to the depressing grindhouse nature of the 2013 film, Rise does make some bold choices for the franchise and doesn't hold back on being viscerally uncomfortable. Overall, I had a great time with this, with Evil Dead continuing to cement its status as a horror franchise with no skips. Groovy indeed. Groovy. For my rating, I am giving this film three and a half Staphanies out of five. Staphanie is the true hero of the film. Eat your heart out, Ash. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of The Martini Shot. If you saw Evil Dead Rise, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. And if you like what you saw here and would like to see more, don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me across all social media channels. Those links are down in the description below. And if you enjoy movie reviews and movie-themed cocktails, be sure to check out my website, martinishot.blog. Until next time, thank you again for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Live deliciously, but please remember to drink responsibly.